Right, let's do something about our previews. And to do that, we're going to take a look at a situation that you have most likely encountered, and that is using previews to test a control, not only to see how it looks, but how it behaves. To demonstrate this, I've got a counter I created for this very purpose that sizes itself to the frame it's given and as well as taking a binding, allows for bounds checking by initializing it with a minimum or maximum value. I'll leave a link to the source in the description if you want to dig through it. To preview and test this control, as you can see, the standard way of doing things would be to create one in your previews like this. There are two problems with this approach, one of them stylistic and another functional. Stylistically, I don't like preview environment code to be mixed in with my preview testing code. I would like my preview device of an iPhone 12 Pro Max to not be mixed in with a presentation code for the view that I'm testing. So that's a separation of concerns thing which may or may not be important to you. I'm also forced to use a constant binding as we can't use state property wrappers in a static context. So while I can test the look of this counter, I'm not able to test the functionality, and by that I mean the minimum or maximum constraints or lack thereof. Swift by Sundell did a nice article on previews where they extended binding to allow mock bindings that can update, which is awesome, and I'll link to it in the description below, but let's look at another approach. If I want to test the functionality of my button, what we would normally do is create a type of harness view, like this one. Here we are of course allowed to use state property wrappers, and use the counter view as it was intended. So in my preview, I'm going to use this harness view instead. Take that, move it down to here. I don't need to give it any of this stuff. I can get rid of all of this. And now it's using my test harness. If I go over to my preview, I can see that this doesn't have any range limitations. This one, I can't go negative, but I can go over four. This one, I can go negative, but I can't go over four, and in this one, I can't go negative or greater than four. So we know that our counter is working correctly for all those scenarios. Fantastic, but before we all go home and celebrate, there's a problem. We've polluted our namespace in order to preview something, and I don't like that. Yes, we could make it private, but it's still, you know, there. You see, one of the things preview providers bring to the table is that nothing inside them is included in the release, so you're not building all these unnecessary previews into the final build. It used to be the case that you needed to surround your previews with conditional compilation clauses to achieve this, but that was a defect and has since been resolved. We could use that very technique on our harness, but who can be bothered to do that? So it would be nice to be able to take care of this natively as well as be able to properly preview state-driven views. The answer to all this is quite simple. What we're going to do is move this view in its entirety, we cut that, and we're just going to paste it in here. So that harness view is defined within the namespace of the preview provider. And this way we can have our cake and eat it too. We can use state-driven variables because we're no longer working in a static context. The release build will no longer include our harness since it's inside the preview provider. And we have an organized way of keeping the environment code separate from the preview slash testing code. I've got a template set up that will create my harness for me and refer to it in the preview's computed property. I'll leave a link to this template in the video description if you want to use it in your own projects. If you don't know how to set up custom templates, I've got a quick tip coming up on that exact topic, so if you don't want to miss that, you might want to subscribe. Uh, maybe you don't want to work like this, I don't know, you'd be mad not to, but we all work differently, I completely understand that, but this is how I work and it seems to work pretty well. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please leave them below, but in the meantime, thanks for joining me, see you next time.